California voters decisively approved a ballot measure on Tuesday that will raise taxes by $6 billion annually over seven years. Heeding the pleas of Guff. Jerry Brown, who said the new revenues were necessary to save the state's public schools and balance the budget. The vote, 54% to 46%, with 95% of precincts reporting Wednesday morning, brought an end to an acrimonious. $123 million battle between the governor and conservative opponents in and outside the state. It was a victory for Mr. Brown, who had staked his personal prestige on the initiative's success and campaigned intensely for it. Across the country, voters in 38 states considered more than 170 ballot measures on fiscal, political and social issues that, in many cases, resonated nationally. Voters in Colorado and Washington made their states the first to legalize marijuana for recreational use. In Oregon, a similar measure appeared headed for defeat. Supporters of Washington's initiative said they hoped its passage would ultimately change federal law, which regards any possession or sale of marijuana as illegal. By sending this message, we can hopefully have a collaborative conversation with the federal government, and that they can see that their policy can be done differently and that prohibition is not working said Tanya S. Winchester, outreach director for the campaign behind the measure, yes on I-502. In Maryland, voters endorsed a ballot measure allowing in-state tuition at public colleges for illegal immigrants. Massachusetts was considering whether to legalize physician-assisted suicide for people with terminal illnesses. Though most of the votes were counted, the result was too close to call. But nowhere was the fight over ballot measures fiercer than in California where spending on campaigning for and against 11 measures totaled nearly $370 million, according to Maclight, an organization that tracks campaign spending. Under Mr. Brown's tax initiative, income tax rates for those earning more than $250,000 annually would be raised for seven years, and a one-quarter cent increase in the state sales tax would be put in place for four years. Without the new revenue, Mr. Brown said. California would need to cut $6 billion a year in spending, mostly from the state's already battered education system, a threat that appeared to have persuaded some voters on Tuesday. We need more funding for the schools, said Omega Jules, 31, who lives in Oakland and works for United Parcel Service of America. They keep taking money out of education, and that is where we need it most. Supported by California teachers' unions, Mr. Brown was tenacious in seeking support for the initiative but he encountered fierce and sometimes unexpected opposition. I know a lot of people had some doubts, had some questions, about can you really go to the people and ask them to vote for a tax? Mr. Brown, a Democrat, said in thanking supporters at a Sacramento hotel, the Associated Press reported. The core reason that brought people together in support of Proposition 30 was a belief in our schools and our university and the capacity of the state government to make an investment that benefits all of us, he said. Last month, an obscure Arizona group called Americans for Responsible Leadership donated $11 million, in part to defeat Proposition 30. Also, Molly Munger, a civil rights lawyer and the daughter of Warren E. Buffett's partner at Berkshire Hathaway, Charles Munger, spent more than $44 million on a rival tax measure, Proposition 38, which was overwhelmingly defeated, with 72.4%. About $135 million was spent in the battle over Proposition 32, which would have outlawed political donations by labor unions. The measure was soundly defeated. Also in California, voters considered an initiative to end the death penalty. With about 95% of precincts partly reporting, the measure was down by 52.6%. The semi-official state results showed early on Wednesday. Supporters, including law enforcement officials, argued that administering the death penalty was inefficient and that eliminating it would save the state money. The argument appeared to have swayed voters, even those who did not oppose the practice on moral grounds. It would be one thing if they said they were going to kill a criminal and then did it the next day, said Lammer Stanbury, an Oakland resident who voted to repeal the death penalty. If you're going to do it, then just do it already. Instead it takes forever and costs a lot. Voters endorsed a measure that would make the state's three strikes law somewhat more lenient by imposing a life sentence only for a third felony conviction considered serious or violent, but they rebuffed another that would have made mandatory the labeling of genetically modified food. Two crucial education measures put charter schools on state ballots. By a wide margin, 
Georgia voters approved an amendment to the state constitution that will allow for the creation of a commission to authorize new charter schools, which are publicly financed but independently operated. The measure drew national attention and campaign contributions from Alice Walton, the daughter of Sam Walton, Walmart's founder, and Americans for Prosperity, the Tea Party organization founded by the billionaire Koch brothers. In Washington, voters were asked to allow charters into the state for the first time. Similar measures had failed three times in the past 16 years. Michigan voters rejected all six proposals on the ballot, including one that would have expanded the powers of emergency administrators to take over financially troubled local governments, and the ability of governors to appoint them, as well as another proposal that would have made collective bargaining the right for employees. In the public and private sectors, 